Hey guys, welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. Today's video is the very first CPU related content for 2017 on the channel and damn, do we have a good one for you today. Yeah, I'm definitely overselling this. Finally, after more leaks and a rapidly sinking ship, we have the official release of Intel's 7th generation desktop processors. For this video, I have the Core i7-7700K and the Core i5-7600K models on hand, and as you might have guessed, we will be doing a little benchmarking. Along with these two processors, Intel will be releasing a range of locked Core i7, Core i5, and Core i3 models. There is also an unlocked Core i3 processor, which we've already looked at, but we expect the price to be far too high for that one, making it a rather pointless product. The information I have on hand suggests a bulk buy price of 157 US, so you can probably expect it to hit shelves around 170 to 180 US. At that price, the Skylake Core i5-6400 seems like a much better investment, and the same is probably true for the Core i5-7400, which is suggested to cost around 170 US in 1000 unit orders. When compared to their Skylake counterparts, it looks like the new KB Lake models are clocked at least 100MHz higher, while some have as much as a 300MHz clock speed advantage. The Core i7-7700K, for example, runs 200MHz higher when compared to the 6700K, with a 300MHz higher maximum single core turbo boost frequency. The other noteworthy change is the upgrade from the HD Graphics 530 to the 630 version, though this does only appear to be a minor upgrade. Both models run their integrated graphics engine at up to 1150MHz. The other processor that we have on hand is the Core i5-7600K which comes clocked at 3.8GHz, though depending on load can clock as high as 4.2GHz. Of course, like the 7700K, the 7600K is an unlocked processor, and when paired with a Z170 or Z270 motherboard, it can be overclocked to operate at greater frequencies. When compared to the 6600K, the new 7600K model runs 300MHz faster, so this could afford it up to 8% better performance. Again, the updated HD Graphics 630 is also being used here, and the same integrated graphics can also be found on all of the S-Series models. Intel is sticking with the LGA 1151 socket for this generation, so that means KB Lake can be used on existing Intel 100 series motherboards, providing their BIOS is up to date. However, in an effort to add a little spice and probably keep board partners happy, Intel is releasing their new range of 200 series chipsets. The desktop range will comprise of the Z270, H270, B250, Q270 and Q250 chipsets. Enthusiasts will be primarily interested in the Z270 chipset for a few reasons, most notably of which being that it's the only chipset to support overclocking of both the CPU and DDR4 memory. The other 270 model being the Q270, this lacks overclocking support but picks up a number of corporate type features such as Intel vPro technology and Intel standard manageability for example. The other corporate focused chipset is the Q250 and as you have no doubt guessed this is a cut down version of the Q270 offering fewer PCIe lanes, USB 3 ports and lacks Intel vPro technology. The H270 chipset naturally fills the same role as last generation's H170. Basically H270 boards will appear to those not buying an unlocked K processor, as well as those who only want to run a single graphics card, which these days is most of us. That said, those opting for a Core i3 processor, a B250 motherboard might be the shot. When compared to the H270, you get far fewer PCIe 3.0 lanes at just 12, just 6 USB 3.0 ports, 1 M2 port, and a single PCIe x16 slot. Frankly, this configuration is still ample for an entry-level PC. Right now, we do have quite a few Z270 and H270 motherboards on hand, and I do plan to take a look at them over the coming weeks. But for now, let's check out how the Core i5 and Core i7 KB8 processors perform. Before getting to the games and all that good stuff, let's check out the memory bandwidth performance. The 7700K and 7600K were able to produce a bandwidth of 31GB per second, which is pretty well on par with the Skylake processors. You can clearly see a decent step up from platforms using DDR3 memory, now that we are testing with DDR4 exceeding 3000MHz. Okay, so now that we've checked out the memory bandwidth performance, time to check out raw CPU performance using Cinebench R15. Here the 7700K was 7% faster than the 6700K, while the 7600K was also 7% faster than its Skylake counterpart, the 6600K. 
As we move through the rest of these tests, it's important to keep in mind that the KB Lake processors are clocked 7% higher than the Skylake models. The last synthetic benchmark that we'll be looking at is PC Mark 8's Creative Test. Here the 7700K scored 9,197 points, making it just 3% faster than the 6700K. Meanwhile, the 7600K scored 8,457 points, making it just 2% faster than the 6600K. The 7700K was just 5% faster than the 6700K when measuring performance using 7-Zip's built-in benchmark. More surprisingly was the fact that the 7600K was just 1% faster than the 6600K. The 7700K completed the Excel workload in just 3.1 seconds, making it 6% faster than the 6700K, though again keep in mind it is clocked around 7% higher. Meanwhile, the 7600K was 5% faster than the 6600K. Before moving on to the games, let's check out how long these new CPUs take to complete our Premiere Pro CC workload. The 7700K took just 637 seconds, which was a 10% improvement from the 6700K. Not bad. Meanwhile, the 7600K was 8% faster than the 6600K. Okay, so now on to the gaming results. Please be aware that due to the fact that we are testing CPU performance here, the settings may seem a bit unrealistic. The idea is to take load off the GPU and place it on the CPU, making that the weakest link. Uh, this can help identify which CPU will allow for more consistent performance under heavy load, and likely perform better in the future as games inevitably become more demanding. So we are testing at 1080p using a Titan XP in games that are known to use a lot of CPU power. Um, games such as Overwatch will be used for example, and Overwatch is actually a really good CPU benchmark, as it isn't that demanding on the GPU, but it can take full advantage of an 8-threaded processor for example, especially when running our bot benchmark. First up we have Battlefield 1, and here the 77 k is able to max out the Titan XP reaching 166 FPS on average. That said, the minimum frame rate was still able to climb, and here the 7700K was 7% faster than the 6700K. Again, I feel the need to remind you that the 7700K is also clocked 7% higher. The 7600K was less impressive, only delivering around 2% more performance over the 6600K. This time when testing with Cities Skylines, we see a 9% boost in performance for the new 7700K over the 6700K when comparing the minimum frame rate. Meanwhile, the 7600K was just 3% faster than the 6600K. Gears of War 4 is another very heavy CPU user. Here the new Core i7 KB Lake processor was 3% faster than the old Skylake processor when comparing the minimum frame rate, while the 7600K was just 2% faster than the 6600K. So pretty weak gains for the KB Lake processors in this title. F1 2016 isn't that heavy on the CPU, but we included it anyway. Again, the 7700K was just 3% faster than the 6700K, while the 7600K was just 4% faster than the 6600K. Overwatch is limited to a 300 FPS cap, and the new KB Lake Core i7 along with the 5960X had no trouble pushing the Titan XP to that cap. Looking at the minimum frame rate, the 7700K was 7% faster than the 6700K. Meanwhile, the 7600K was just 2% faster than the 6600K, which was a bit disappointing to find. Total War Warhammer is the only DirectX 12 game that we've used for testing. Here we once again see some very mild gains from the higher clocked KB Lake processors when compared to Skylake. It seems that 4 cores is ideal for maximum performance in this title as the lower clocked 5960X really falls behind, losing out to many of the more recently released higher clocked Core i5 processors. Finally, we have the insanely CPU demanding title that is Watch Dogs 2. The 7700K averaged 91 FPS, making it just a single frame faster than the 6700K. Meanwhile, the 7600K was just 2 FPS faster than the 6600K. So again, yet another disappointing result for KB Lake. I've seen a heap of KB Lake news over the past few months, suggesting that the integrated graphics has been vastly improved upon. This was surprising to me, as on paper very little looks to have changed. Comparing the unlocked KB Lake and Skylake chips in the Tomb Raider reboot, 2012 Sleeping Dogs and Rocket League suggests that very little has changed. Using the normal or medium quality settings in Tomb Raider at 1080p allowed for an average of just 31 FPS, and that was just 1 FPS faster than the Skylake chips. Rocket League actually played reasonably well considering with an average of 43 FPS using the quality preset which is essentially a medium type quality setting. Again, we are testing at 1080p, so not a bad result despite only being a few FPS improvement over Skylake. 
Sleeping Dogs play with an average of 37 FPS, though it did dip down to as low as 24 FPS at times. This time the KB Lake processors were on average 3 FPS faster for a 9% performance improvement. Here we have the total system power consumption figures recorded when running the Excel workload. As you can see, the KB Lake processors only consumed a few watts less than the Skylake models. Still, given they are clocked roughly 7% faster, the fact that we are seeing power savings here is decent. Of course, the efficiency improvement isn't amazing, but it is the most impressive result we've seen so far. Using a power bug program like Prime95, we see that the 7700K pushes total system consumption to 148 watts, while the 7600K reached just 126 watts. Again, this made them slightly more efficient than the Skylake counterparts. So far, the 7700K and 7600K look okay. They've provided small performance boosts over the equivalent Skylake processors while consuming a little less power. That seems like a win-win, and it's pretty well in line with the baby steps that we've come to expect from the modern day Intel. However, as I noted a few times, we often saw gains of around 7% or less with the KB Lake processors, and that's an issue because they're clocked around 7% higher. So what happens if we level the playing field? Well, let's find out. Okay, so that's disappointing. Clock for clock at 4.5 GHz, the 6700K and 7700K deliver virtually the same performance. In fact, it really is the same performance, certainly error of margin stuff. The same is also true for the 6600K and 7600K. Clock for clock, they are essentially the same processes in terms of performance. Previously, the 7700K and 7600K were slightly faster in Gears of War 4. Now, when matched clock for clock, they are indistinguishable from the Skylake processors. For those wondering, this was also true for other games tested as well, such as Overwatch, for example. These new KB Lake processors were quite good when it came to overclocking. Using just 1.33 volts, I managed a 100% stable overclock at 4.9 GHz. Using 1.4 volts, it was possible to reach 5 GHz, but keeping the CPUs cool wasn't an easy task. I could even load into Windows at up to 5.1 GHz, though at this frequency it wasn't possible to complete all our stress tests. In comparison, our 6700K processor maxed out at 4.8 GHz using the same 1.33 volts, and going as high as 1.45 volts wouldn't stabilize the chip at 4.9 GHz. So it seems when it comes to overclocking, KB Lake is good for another 100 to 200 MHz. Certainly not a mind-blowing result, but it will no doubt keep overclockers happy. Using a fairly basic all-in-one liquid cooler, the 7700K did hit 95 degrees at 4.9 GHz, the cooler used was the Deepcool Captain 120EX. Those overclocking this chip will want something with at least a 240mm radiator attached. If I create an overclocking guide, I'll certainly be using a more extreme cooling solution. Out of the box, using the same Deepcool liquid cooler, the Core i7 7700K idled at 31 degrees, and then under load went as high as 77 degrees. The 6700K was then installed in the same system. It idled at 30 degrees, but under load hit 81 degrees. I had read reports indicating that the 7700K was a much hotter chip than the 6700K. That certainly isn't the case when comparing my two chips though. Okay, so we've now looked at out-of-the-box performance for both the Core i7-7700K and Core i5-7600K processors. Uh, we've looked at clock for clock performance, overclocking performance, temperatures, power consumption, and integrated graphics performance. Out of the box, the KB Lake processors were for the most part 5-7% to faster than the equivalent Skylake processors. Of course, as noted, they are clocked around 7% higher, and when running a few clock-for-clock -clock tests, we discover that there is no difference at all between KB Lake and Skylake. So that's uh, disappointing. No IPC gains to be seen then. Efficiency has been slightly improved, though as some have pointed out, Intel has been selling 14 nanometer CPUs for 18 months now, so the process has inevitably matured in that time, and this will help to improve efficiency. Overclocking looks to be slightly better with KB Lake, and our sample suggests that overclockers can look forward to squeezing out another 100 to 200 megahertz. I have seen reports of terrible temperatures for the Core i7 7700K, so I don't want to say conclusively that it runs cooler than the 6700K, but mine certainly does does. That said, I have an early engineering sample, and looking at the data available online, my 6700K certainly seems to run hotter than the typical retail chip. Ultimately, for desktop users, the upgrade from Skylake to KB Lake obviously isn't viable. Even for those running a Haswell or Broadwell processor, the incentive to upgrade to Intel's latest platform just isn't there. 
Meanwhile, those who purchased a Core i7 4770K two and a half years ago are probably sitting there scratching their head, wondering where they go next. And I can tell you it certainly isn't the 7700K. Hell, if we look at the 4.5 GHz results, we see that even the Iverbridge 3770K is hanging in there. It's a good bit faster than the 7600K anyway. Even the 2600K makes out quite well, only trailing the 6700K and 7700K by a 23% margin in Gears of War 4. A very CPU intensive game that was tested with what is currently the most powerful gaming GPU available. I guess for now we'll have to wait and see what AMD's Ryzen has to offer mainstream performance users. In the end, KB Lake looks like it's not much more than a Skylake refresh, and frankly this is how I feel Intel should have tried to pass it off. But I guess for OEMs and retailers, 6th gen refresh doesn't quite have the same impact as an entirely new 7th gen product line. What's that sir, you have an old 6th generation system? You'll want to upgrade that to a new 7th generation model, they are much faster. Anyway, for us enthusiasts it looks like another disappointingly small baby step. Perhaps I'm being overly negative? Let me know what you think in the comments below, I'm always keen to hear what you have to say. For now though, that concludes my KB Lake coverage. I'm your host Steve and I'll catch you on the next one.